What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Yo, yo, man. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. Dude, I, when I saw that you posted on Facebook, you're about to do a, a, a 50 podcast blitz. I was like, I need to hop on this blitz. So <laughs> crazy. How many podcasts have you done so far today? This is number five today, and they're just all they're they're back to back to back to back. So I'm fired up, man. It's pretty cool because I get to just go 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 all day long. I'm loving it. Nice, nice. I'm excited to have you on a Sea Turtle Mindset podcast, um, and YouTube. You know, so definitely want to welcome you to the show. Um, one thing that I always tell my people that I, I'm an interviewing, you know, I'm always talking about passion. You know, it's all about mindset. A lot of people say success is eighty percent mindset, twenty percent physical. So um, definitely want to hear out your mindset and let's just jump right into it, man. Um, dude, I mean, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, uh, put it in any better way. Like, dude, most of everybody thinks that, uh, intelligence and, and, and IQ and stuff is like the main factor of deciding success when in most cases it's the emotional qualities, the, the confidence, the patience, the per persistence, all that is what gets you through. You don't got to be the smartest in the room and the most talented. You just got to want it better than anybody else. Yo, giving me goosebumps just talking about it, you know, um, we're both <laughs> authors, you know, and, and, and it's not to like boast about it, but never in a million years would I thought that I was going to become an author as well. And so, you know, the sea turtle mindset and what I promote in the book is, you know, having that consistency and that persistency, that's literally showing the mindset of the sea turtle, you know? Um, so, you know, a lot of people watching right now uh, on my audience probably don't know who you are. And so let's just go with that. You know, let's start with, um, what's your backstory, man? Where, where are you from? Where you come from? Um, and you know, yeah, tell, man, tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> right on bro yeah i'll keep it condensed because i mean we all have long stories obviously um but i grew up without a father i always like did things overboard like we all want to fit in to an extent we're social creatures that's part of our dna uh, but i took it overboard to where i wanted to fit in too much and when i wasn't accepted like i would do things out of my character to be accepted by certain crowds and ended up going to prison for over f five years total my life i went away the first time for four years flat uh, by the age of 19 for being a knucklehead, just doing stupid shit growing up, man. And, uh, you know, that taught me a lot, but I got out for about two years and I went back for, uh, uh 20 days before my twin sons were born for eight months. I didn't know how long I was being locked up at the time. And that Jonathan, that was it for me, man. That was like, I'm done. You know, all I wanted to be was a father that I didn't have growing up. And now here I am missing out on that, you know, enough is enough. And that completely changed my entire perception paradigm on everything. Uh, I got out eight months later, I uh, got into entrepreneurship. I started in network marketing. Um, I made almost a $2,000 a month residual income within my first six months. However, um, there's great network marketing companies out there and there's great network marketers out there. And then there's bad ones, just like with everything. Right. And I was in a bad, I wouldn't say it's a bad company, but the way they taught you to network in there was not the right way. And I was burning a lot of relationships and I ended up losing my passion for it. Mm. And so, so I left about two years after that. And then I got into uh, coaching, which eventually got me into what I'm doing now. But before I launched the podcast, that's when everything changed for me. Before I launched it, I launched it because every time I tried to collaborate with somebody, um, with any other entrepreneur, uh, nobody gave me the time of day, man. They were, they were counting me out. They were laughing at me. I was just some ex-convict turned entrepreneur afterthought that nobody wanted to give the time of day to. And out of that frustration, out of that pain, uh, I decided to go ahead and launch the uh, Underdog Empowerment Podcast. I did it for a selfish reason first out of that frustration and pain. Also did it to empower other underdog entrepreneurs. But, you know, you got to take care of self before you can help anybody. You can't right. fill a cup from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it started. And it became a top 200 rated podcast in the first week. And the next week I had Billy Jean's marketing on my podcast. Uh, and then ever since it's been back to back to back to back celebrity after celebrity, you know, and, and, it's, and it's grown my brand tremendously. but just a week prior before I launched that podcast, nobody wanted to collaborate with me. And then I launched the top 200 rated podcast and everybody does. So it was like a complete, it was a stark contrast, man. It's been crazy ever since. So. Wow. 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 Definitely. Um, you know, when you hit that wall, you know, and nobody wanted to collaborate, what was it that kept you persevering? You know, you said that you wanted to become that father figure that you didn't have. Was it that, or was it more of like, because you said, um, you know, 
it became selfish, but what was that inner, like, what was the, the why factor that was just, you know. I was just about to get to that. I was just about to say till you said why, bro. Like, so I, I talk a lot about this on, on the show and stuff uh, where that underdog mentality that go out and prove them wrong, you know, all that, that's great. You know, that's, that, that'll help you power through a lot and that's great motivation. However, motivation comes and goes, bro. There's days where you wake up and you're like, man, I don't want to do this shit or I don't want to work out or I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? And there's going to be plenty of days like that, that where that happens. So what are you going to do in those moments? And in those moments, like you mentioned, you got to have those reasons why you're doing it in the first place. And if you don't have those reasons why you're not going to make it, you got to have strong reasons why for me, it was waking up in that jail cell 20 days before my twin sons were being born and that pain of not being there. That was my why. I said, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back home to be a responsible father and to be happy and successful. I didn't even know what happy and success looked like at that point in time in my life. I didn't know how I was going to make that happen. I'm sitting in a jail cell, not knowing when I'm going to come home, either six months to a year and a half for the rest of my parole. I didn't know all the how I was going to do it, but I had my reasons why, strong enough reasons why I was going to do it. Wow, wow. And so that's powerful stuff, dude. That is, that's powerful stuff. So, you know, why, would, why did you, you know, one thing that I, I like to tell, tell people all the time too is like, what is it that keeps you in the game in terms of coaching? You know, obviously you had a, a career in network marketing and, and it threw you off in terms of how they were, treating other people and, and, and building and, and killing credibility and, and, and your reputation. What rebuilt that besides you hitting the top 200 in the podcasts, what was it that you was, um, what can I say? What was you standing on? To yeah. Work yeah, man. And, and so that's a really great question. There's a bunch of different factors that play in it because when I left network marketing, I struggled for the next year and a half before I even launched my podcast. I tried to become a life coach. I didn't make a single penny or help a single person as a life coach because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. My, I didn't know anything about marketing. And I would say stupid shit like, I can help you achieve your goals or I can help you live a better life. Nobody <laughs> wants that. You know, that's not solving a specific problem for a specific person. So I had to bump my head over and over and over again. Um, but what kept me going through that? Uh, is it, it, there's a number of different reasons. One, first and foremost, you got to cultivate wanting it bad enough to withstand anything that gets thrown at you. Um, I was really fortunate to go through the prison and all the shit that I went through because that built character, man. Those times of adversity, you either let it, the days that break you are the days that make you. You either let it break you and you stay there or you bounce back up and now nothing can fuck with you. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what you got to have. You got to build that first and foremost. You got to want it better than anything else. And then the why, what's the, 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 the strong enough reasons why that's, ultra number one important and then just just really like dude it's like it's like i use visualization but i visualize things in a negative way like i visualize my life like if i give up on this and i go back to a life of mediocrity what will my life be like how will my kids look at me how will i feel about myself what type of regrets will i have like I visualize it and feel that shit. And that's enough for me to snap back into it. Like, I don't want that. I'm just going to push through this little pain right now to get to the long-term gain. It's, it's funny how, you know, not a lot of people talk about the, the negative side of visualize. You know, when, when I'm reading like books or I'm listening to these like YouTube inspirational stuff, they're talking about, oh, visualize what you want in life. You know, visualize the good. But sometimes you got to visualize the bad because the bad is <laughs> yeah. The bad sometimes motivates you more than the good. That's for sure. That's for sure. Amen, dude. It's just like uh, I first read it in Tony Robbins' book, but it, it's basic psych human psychology, man. We are wired to uh, – we're, we're wired – we make every single decision based off of two pillars. One is our desire to gain pleasure, and the second one is our need to avoid pain. And in most human beings, overwhelming majority, our need to avoid pain is greater than our desire to gain pleasure. And so like we make so many decisions based off of the short term, like eating that piece of cake, your desire to gain pleasure and taste the cake and you're uh, avoiding pain by resisting it. So you give in in the short term versus if you, you know, switch that up and thought about it long term, your, uh, your, your desire to gain pleasure is moving towards a fit body and you're not, you know, stuffing your face with, with, uh, with, with horrible food and you're avoiding the pain of being overweight and obese and having diseases and stuff. And so it's like, you got to link that pain and pleasure appropriately. 
Yeah, that's plain and pleasure. That's crazy. That's that's nuts. It's it's definitely two decisions you're always making. <laughs> either you gotta get pleased or you gotta get pain. Either or. Um, yeah. So let's talk about you know what are you currently reading? Because you know I'm a, I'm a big promoter of um self development. You know I've been involved. Um, so the book came about. Um, because I, I got so involved. So I'm in a network marketing company uh, currently. Um, and my product isn't like physical, it's travel. I'm just going to keep it real. It's, it's travel. And because of travel, I've been able to travel the world. And um, along my travels, I just read books, read books, consumed books, like it was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so <laughs> then I created my own philosophy. And um, I'm always promoting, you know, books all the time. So what are you reading currently right now that's helping you get to the next level? Yeah, man. What I'm currently reading right at this moment is Mastery by Robert Greene. Um, dude, I recommend any book that he's wrote. He's got five or six of them. Um, it's, he's a genius. It's all human psychology. You can't argue with any of it. It's like, and, it, and the way I look at it, man, I'm a psychology nerd. I'm not an expert. Like I'm not a, a psychologist or whatever, but I am constantly geeking out on psychology and watching, reading, talking about it whenever I get the chance to. And it's just anything that involves two human beings or more psychology. So have you, you ever, have you ever read the book, um, pitch anything, pitch anything? No, but I've heard amazing things about it, dude. Dude, If you love like psychology, it would just like, Oh, that's a good book, man. Like, like it was a good book and, and it, it got me into like psychology too. Like I went to school and I graduated and I wish like, it's not like a regret of mine, but I remember taking a psychology course, a philosophy course, and a, an economics course, and I wish I would have just stuck with that stuff because that's what yeah. we're doing now. It's psychology, philosophy, and economics. <laughs> like, it's nuts. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I got to put that on my list too, pitch anything. I've heard so many good things about it. That's how I am. It's like when I hear it refer recommended or referred by so many people, like if I hear it like more than three or five times, then I go and get it. Yeah, yeah, no. Pitch anything is good, good. Um, so I know we're going to wrap up very sh uh, shortly. Um, one thing that I promote too always is spreading the wisdom. You know, we're here talking about your passion. Um, you're very passionate of what you do, you know, and it's your podcast, your empowerment. Um, to wrap this up, why did you choose Underdog Empowerment and that logo? Because I'm always looking at logos and, and it's like, you know, logos and brands is important when you, when you want to get noted, like you want to stay like Coca-Cola, they didn't choose that brand for no reason. So why did you choose underdog empowerment and, and then the bulldog? Yeah, man. So that's a great question. And I love this. So I, I, I started the podcast. I told you, you know, I started out of uh, frustration yep. and for selfish reason, also to empower other underdogs. But also I had learned from my mistakes because I had already been building my brand and I started on YouTube originally. And because I, I like uh, video over uh, speaking until I started podcasting, I love podcasting more than anything else. But um, I started, I, I did YouTube and my brand on YouTube was win with Zach. I had a logo made up, all this stuff. And what I've realized is nobody gives a shit about win with Zach. It's not, it, it's about me or whatnot. And, and I can't really build a brand about that, but underdog empowerment that speaks to underdog that alpha male like i'm gonna do whatever the fuck it takes to win type and so that's where like okay we're doing an underdog empowerment and then i picked the colors accordingly red black and white if you look if you googled the psychology of colors you'll see what each one of those mean red's like a power color yep, yep. Uh, all this stuff right and so that color right there man you already know yeah dude absolutely and so the colors all made it had a reason behind it the dog you know it's an underdog so it goes with the name obviously but also i picked the pit bull because it's like the the most dominant dog in my my favorite dog and i don't know if it's like the most dominant but in most cases a lot of cases it is and so that's how i came about the whole brand it was learning from my mistake of not making it about me but making it a movement a brand that everybody that fits that mold can get behind and, and be nice. a part of definitely um I can't say I'm an underdog myself, you know, <laughs> Do, like, and, and what I like, what I like about the, the name too, is because, you know, the underdogs are always the ones that do the upsets, you know, and those are the, it, it's the greatest like achievements. And so, you know, for those underdogs out there listening, you know, just keep pushing, you know, um, we've hit adversity. Like I haven't had the adversity you've had. 
especially, but, you know, just being able to be here right now, um, it's 2019, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an honor to be interviewing you right now and just be on a podcast, being part of this, is this the first time you ever do a 50 podcast in 42 hour and 40 in 42 hours? Yeah, it's definitely the first time I ever did some crazy stuff like that. <laughs> nice, nice. So definitely an honor to be part of it. Um, looking forward for the next one for sure. It's actually even motivated me to go, go uh, and, and do some crazy stuff like that. Like just like, what are you eating? Like, what's your breaks? What are they looking like? I thought about it. I was like, yo, this guy's he's about to go ham right now. And I'm like, what's he doing? Like to stay, have your energy up. Like, dude, it's crazy. Cause like I literally just drinking water and I'm going to try, I got, I'm going to try to get something to eat in between one of them, but I literally have like 10 minute breaks between each one. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes it's not even that because, you know, we do a little bit of small talk after the interview and stuff. So it's like maybe like five minutes sometimes. So I'm just running back to forth, but the energy, I just love doing it, bro. And it's like, that's where the energy comes from. I'm I, I almost, it's like I'm more fired up today than I am normally because I'm doing them all back to back. I'm just doing it all day long and I get to do what I love, man. So it's pretty cool. Hey, so I saw some slots and this is obviously uh, uh, away from it. Is the, those slots still available? Uh, the, for the marathon? Yeah. Yeah, there's like, like. I'm down to hop on for the next podcast too because this is for the mindset one. You know, it was more mindset and the other one was network marketing. So if you see me again, be ready because the <laughs> be ready. So to close it out, um, is, you know, the ultimate, you know, for those who don't know, you know, I'm an underdog right now. And, um, the, the purpose of the book was it's a, it's about a sea turtle. So have you ever read the alchemist? I've heard amazing things about the alchemist so, by Paul, 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 or I, I know you're talking Paul about. Coelho. I think, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think he's Portuguese, so, Brazilian. So I read the book and it inspired me. And it was like, yo, like, so it was my freshman year, it was my senior year of college, right? And I got this, it was my last assignment to write a short story. Fast forward, it turned into a full 100 page book. So the story is about a sea turtle, a baby sea turtle who switched at birth, right? And um, he, he thinks he's a land turtle. And then he realizes he's a sea turtle. And so then he starts traveling the world. And along the way, he learns different life lessons from different creatures, right? And their purpose um, his, his end goal is to reach Jonathan, which is crazy. And he's a St. Galapagos tortoise. Like you can Google this after he's a real turtle. He's 185 years old. And so mm. turtles, what they symbolize is wisdom. So that's the whole point of the, of the book is he's looking to become the wisest sea turtle of all time. And so he, at the end of the book, he's always promoting spreading the wisdom. So to close this out, I, if you can give one out of, all your years of, of entrepreneurship or even prior to entrepreneurship, what would be your wisdom that you want the sea turtle mindset community to remember you as in terms of what's that wisdom? Cause right now you're a sea turtle to me and you've been traveling and I want to know your, I want to know your wisdom. So what's that one thing that, that you want to spread to the world? Yeah, man. So it, it's, uh, it, it goes in perfectly. One is, it, it, it's really one thing, but there's like three pieces to it. Okay. One is don't act further along than what you really are. You don't got to fake on the internet and act like some fake guru. Uh, keep it real. And then know, so you know where you're at. You're not, that's the thing about underdogs. They like to be like, Oh, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. I'm better than them. And you're not, you're not better than them yet. You need to develop the skills. So you're not the underdog anymore. But so don't act further along what you really are. Develop the skills, master the skills when you first start off with the skill, you're, 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 you don't know and you're from the outside looking in and, and at the industry or whatever is completely new to you. And then you get to the second phase where you're a practitioner at that point and you start trying out your own ideas and trying out, you know, following the rules that you've learned that, that are set up in this industry or whatnot. And then you get to the third level where you become a master and you've internalized these skills because you practice on them over and over and over again, over 10,000 hours worth of developing your skills. You're a true master. You've literally don't even have to think about doing the skill no more because you've internalized it. And now at this point, you can manipulate, bend and break and make new rules because you have became a master. And so that's that part. And then finally, to speed up that whole entire process is to find somebody that already has what you want and become their student. 
whether you have to pay them money, whether you have to barter services, whether you have to connect them with somebody else that would be a great relationship for them, find some type of way to add value to them and become their student because I know of no better shortcut in life than finding someone that already has what you want and becoming their student. And if you know of a faster shortcut, hit me up at contact at ZacharyBabcock.com and let me know about it because I would love to talk about it on my show as well. Let's get it. Let's get it. So to close it out, you know, I don't want to go into your break, but you know, where can people find you? I know you're a self-published author as well. So let, let them know where they can get the underdog, the original OG. <laughs> right on. Yeah, man, dude. I, uh, if you guys appreciate this interview, I'm passionate about the podcast as well. Come check it out, man. It's underdog empowerment. You could subscribe to it on any podcast platform that you're listening to this podcast to right now. And to make it really easy for you, you can go to underdog empowerment.com right there on the front page. You can click the iTunes, Google play stitch or Spotify, whichever works for you. Hope to see you guys over there. And Jonathan, thanks for having me, man. For sure. Thank you for, for having you on this crazy, crazy marathon. Woo! Blast, brother, and we'll definitely uh, hop you back on another episode on a sea turtle mindset. Keep spreading the looking, wisdom, bro. Looking forward to it, bro. Thank you. Peace out.